RagDollPropZombie.com tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a quick overview of getting your ragdoll prop from Blender to Source. It's for people who know their way around Blender, rigging and QC files but just haven't put it all together yet to get a ragdoll prop in Engine and it's much simpler than you'd think. If you're new to Blender or QC files I'll be putting a much more in-depth tutorial up in a few weeks which will help you much more than this one. Alright so to get started I'm going to open up my little file that I made a bit earlier. I've got a simple single joint model. I've made it colourful so that you can see which parts I want to move. Alright, so I just want to rotate it on the X so it looks like that. So it's a very simple L wedge joint. <coughs> um, I also have my physics mesh here. And the first thing that tripped me up when I was trying to make ragdoll models is that I thought the armature was the bones for a ragdoll prop, but it isn't. Armatures are only exported for animations. In Source, you model the bones as a physics mesh and you don't export the armature at all for ragdolls. Although you don't need to export your armature, you do need to rig both the physical and the reference meshes. So we'll do that now. When you're rigging your physics or your reference mesh, you can weight the bones and the vertices however however you like so that everything deforms properly. But when you're rigging your physics mesh, your collision mesh, um, you should really try to have one bone to a vertice. You shouldn't shouldn't try to have ver vertices being oddly weighted to different bones because you're making a skeleton and they're supposed to be rigid other than the joints. So our mesh is now rigged and ready for export. Export them to wherever you do, don't export the armature. So as you can see I've got mine set, this is ref, which is my reference model, and then this one is phys, because it's my physics model. And there you go, physics and reference. Now we have to do the QC file. With this QC file I'm really just going to cover the bare basics of the ragdoll, so only what is absolutely essential to the ragdoll and model base function is going into this QC file. Uh, important things to note if you know what you're doing with the QC is instead of using the body command you have model, so instead of body studio or body whatever you have model studio or whatever, and instead of collision mesh you enter collision joints. So I'll just type it up as we go. Make this font nice and big so you can read it.
I'm gonna put studio there just so I don't confuse it. Uh, I always put a double enter in between the rest of it and collision joints in the sequence because later on we're gonna be pasting over it. So just do it now for nice layout. Now their collision joints is telling the um, it's telling Studio Model to use the model uh, the fizz.smd, and then it's also saying we have a sequence which is called Ragdoll, which is using fizz.smd. So that should work hopefully. No, oh, line three is incomplete. It didn't work. Oh yeah because you have to put in the reference mesh. Never mind. So that's telling us we've got uh, our model, which is called Studio, which is using ref.smd. There we go. It's all nice and compiled for us. Go to SDK. I've already set up all the um, materials and stuff like that. So there we have it in Half-Life Model Viewer. Now to set the bones, because at the moment we haven't set that the said that the bones can move, we go into the physics tab and oh well actually we'll go render physics model so you can see our bones there. And then we go into the physics tab and you can select your bones from here, top and bottom, well, that's all I've got. <coughs> now the top one I'm not gonna set it to move at all because it's a root bone, it's gonna get thrown around the level. And the bottom one, because I only wanted to swing on one axis, which is the Z axis in source, which is going that way. Uh, so you select Z on the little radio buttons down here. Um, and now here we set the minimum and maximum amount that we want it to swing. And a good way to, to check this is you just move this test just a little bit and then move that one just a little bit and then that way you can slide that up and down. Ignore the hole there. It's, yeah, I can't be stuck fixing it. But anyway, so we want that to be able to swing all the way around until it gets to that bit there. So about there. And then the max. See this one, you can see that's gone to max and min. And so that's the minimum there. So that's good. Now we'll hit this generate QC button. And what that does is it, uh, it generates the... QC lines that you need to put in your collision joints and sequence functions and put them on the clipboard. So when you go back here, just highlight that and press Control paste uh, And I like to get rid of this activity die ragdoll because it's not an NPC and FPS because you don't need it. Now ragdoll pose, that's um, a valve mannerism. So change that to fizz because you're using your physics mesh and um, I think that's it collision joints no, we want to change that to fizz as well alright so you have collision joints using your fizz mesh uh, mass inertia, I'll go into them in the other tutorial when I get to it and your constraints are here and then you've got your sequence ragdoll using your fizz mesh so save that recompile and if all went well, you should be able to open up hammer and compile it and it'll look sweet. Alright, and there we have our ragdoll. Yeah, it's a little dodgy. Um, so you can see it's moving around and everything. You have put that in hammer as a prop ragdoll as well, prop fix will work. But yeah. There you go. Now you'll undoubtedly have a, a bunch of problems because it's never that easy, but um, that that's the basics that should put you on the right track. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to go have a look at my site, milkshakezombie.com, for models and other stuff for source. See you later.